I was just about welcome, welcome to Snowmobile, Snowmobile Sessions live on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform. We're the number one destination to learn about snowmobiling, network with other sledders, and have an awesome time doing it. We'll meet other snowmobilers that share your passion and show your fan photos along the way. Snowmobile Sessions live. Enjoy the ride. It's a journey. This episode of Snowmobile Sessions Live is brought to you by StuffLikeThis.ca. Get your custom printed clothing and COVID masks there, just like Greg Easton did. His is on his way, and yours should be too. StuffLikeThis.ca slash masks. Get yours today. It's also brought to you by our super fans. Last week, our super fan Easy Rider was Mark Slayton. We had Dustin Ingram move his way up to Boondocker through several super chats. And our Mountain Mad Men of the Week were New Age Landscaping and Maritime Snow Riders. Thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate that. That's awesome. And, uh, and just to get things started here, Corey Brock, he kicked it off with $6.99 <laughs> super chat. Canadian, so that's about... <laughs> Three hundred dollars U.S. <laughs> Thank you so much, Corey. You are my man, man. You are my man. So, who do we got in here? We got Andrew Lavely. We got Jeremy Oder Oderkirk. He's in there. Wisco Sledheads. Welcome aboard, man. That's awesome. Dakota, Canada. Dakota's in the house. Corey Brock. Howdy, boys. Jesse Buckman. Of course, he's in the house. <laughs> uh, we got uh, who else? Jason Campo, man. Hope those decals are staying on in the rain. That's good. I told you not to get them wet, didn't I? That was part of the part of the things. We got that Rev Riders in the house. Of course he is. <laughs> That's great. Welcome aboard, guys. Thank you so much. And you can tell Rich and I are, are decked out in our uh, tech fest. Yep. And uh, we're going to bring on the um, tech rider, the manufacturers of tech fest. And they got a lot in store for us tonight. So without further ado, Steve Brand. And someone else. <laughs> Boom. Welcome aboard, guys. How's it going? Thanks all. This is my friend, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you both. <laughs> Welcome to uh, World Headquarters here. That's great. So whereabouts are you located, uh, Steve? Up here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Taking his temperature, you okay? Thirty-four. You okay to go? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be one of these Last shows. Now, so, all. So no, we're uh, right here in uh, Minden, Ontario, two and a half hours north of Toronto. Uh, for those who uh, sled locally, we're right on the rail trail, halfway between Lindsay and Alberta, and so <clears throat> we're able to jump out and do our thing, whether it's uh, dirt bikes, ATVs, side-by-side, or sleds right from the door. It's kind of cool to be up here. That's awesome. It's on my bucket list to stop in. I've been up there, well, not up there in the last few years, but I have been up there snowmobiling uh, years years ago. And uh, I've seen you on, like, snow tracks TV and stuff and realize you're off the trail. It's like I haven't been, ba been back up in that area, so I'm going to have to get in there. I think it'd be kind of cool to see. Yeah, it's good facility. Uh, I've been there three times this past year, so I picked up my best there. You guys are great, man. You're uh, Melissa and all your employees there are amazing. So really awesome customer service. Well, thank That's you. That's great. We have a great team. We take it personal because you know your riding experience is, is ours as well, and you know, we're you know a lot of teamwork here. <laughs> this is our 24th year. We're still domestically sourced and manufactured right here. I mean, I don't know any company that went overseas to improve product quality, and our product only has one chance to work right. So we've, we've stuck to our knittings. It's been difficult in the early years, but uh, we're getting better known now and have more and more customers. And, you know, the thing is, the Tech Fest only has to work once to pay for itself. And uh, <laughs> Yeah. You know, we've got first customers from 25 years ago still riding their same Tech Fest. These people, at least they could do is put on some weight or lose some weight. <laughs> <laughs> most of these, That's uh, what these motorheads uh, that, that we deal with, uh, you know, they'll in 25 years, they probably had 10 to 12 sleds, 10 to 12 helmets, four or five trucks. And they saw in 
you know, five or six jackets, a couple of pairs of pants, and they still got the same tech vest. So we're, uh, yeah, we're I hear you. I hear. I know. I know somebody here that actually had to get a new tech vest because he he changed the size last year, but it was a good one. Yeah, he went no, down it was good, in yeah. size. Yeah, so that's they good. Great. They were amazing. That's amazing good. help again. So we're yeah. gonna we're gonna talk about tech rider and tech vest and maybe get a few more things up the sleeve there. But do you, you guys want to sit in for some fan photos? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah? Well, let's let's kick this off the way we always kick it off. Here we go. See, we moved you over. Isn't that funny how that song does that every time? <laughs> Nice. So, yeah. So anyway, this is and feel free to interject if you if you want. This is the way we do. This is the way we roll on these things. So this is John Ferguson. He says 2020 just got better. He's getting the sleds and trailer ready for on a sunny Sunday with snow in the forecast for the coming week. Thanks for the swag, Gary, and congrats to all involved in the snowmobile session show. And look at the photo he sent of the skidoo. Isn't that great with my T-shirt hanging there? Yeah. You know. <laughs> Oh wait, what's mm -hmm. that? Oh uh, yeah, oh, we, we just oh, we we'll, we'll hide that. We'll hide this one, whatever that one is. That's I a perfect fan want... for our channel, right there. We'll play <laughs> as we can do. That's right, exactly. I, I I was gonna hide that one there, but you know what? We'll we'll just lower it in there. I, just, I did that for Rich's benefit. You know, checks out. There we go. That's better. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Awesome. Thanks so much, John. That's great. We appreciate you having on, and you've been great every week. Uh, for us, all my fa all of our fans have been awesome every week. This is uh, Andy, Andy Schluter. He's from Wisconsin. He doesn't say anything else, but I do love that photo. Nice cat, T cat, very nice. Yeah, Absolutely. with the nine thousand turbo with the with the old truck in the back. It's kind of neat. Yeah, got like nice. uh, today's technology with yesterday's junk. Heck yeah, right. This is Matt Gayfert or G Guyfert. He's riding near Port Elgin, Ontario on a sunny day in January 2020. Beautiful area. area, Highly recommended. He's loving the show. He says, thank you, guys. Isn't that cool? Nice awesome. little free ride with the, nice. with the orange. Speaking of free ride, uh, Dustin sent in a super chat. Asking oh, a here. Bit. Let me you see if I can get the sound coming. effect. <laughs> I do. Very nice. Dustin, thank Man, you He's got to be one buddy. of the top guys up there. He keeps sending all the time. I know, you. right? Two or three times. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. Did you hear that? Yep. Yep. Did you yep. hear that? Okay. I changed it up so I can't hear it, but you guys should be able to. And 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 my wife can't hear it either. <laughs> he said it's for the um, Gary Skidoo Parts Fund, and he asked me if I checked out the. Yeah. <laughs> You're in. Um, Buddy, thank you. If I checked out the free ride before I got my sled, they actually didn't make a free ride 137 this year, so it was the. Uh, 146 and up and that's got the t-motion skid so just a little bit a uh, little too off trail oriented for uh my type of riding so nice yeah that's cool yeah, thank you dustin man yeah, that's awesome it. that's awesome all right well you you turn that down and i, I get i actually put it back up all right <laughs> who do we got here next so that's uh matt he's port elgin's awesome like look at that trail that looks like a rail trail for sure. Steve, is that, does that, like, you can get to Port El from, to your place from Port Elgin fairly quick, right? You're probably an hour? No, no, uh, Port Elgin, that's over on Lake Huron side. That would be by snowmobile, good conditions, nobody to wait for six, six hours one way. Oh, seriously? Yeah, so <laughs> wow. we're, we're just north of, we're between Lindsay and Halliburton, we're, North and a touch oh, quick. Oh, you're the yeah. other the other side. Your Kawartha is not Muskoka's kind of thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Right on yeah, top I, of the yeah. So I got if you. We, if anybody's been to Whitney up the power line, yep. That's our territory there. That's the south yep. end of the rap ride. Okay. Th then th there you go. I would have been driving all over Port Elgin area looking for your <laughs> shop and well, we'd, we'd be waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> keep a log on the fire i'll be there eventually yeah. <laughs> so scott hassan sent this pic look at that and uh he doesn't didn't send me any text to go with it 
but uh, he sent a bunch of pictures, and they're just dynamite. Yeah, that's nice. Here, we'll, we'll start Deep this. Deep there, huh? Yeah, they're getting they're nailed out it. west. <clears throat> yeah? Oh, yeah. There's lots of snow out west now. I think they're checking the bogeys on that one. <laughs> a long track this on that. Is, yeah, that, that's buried. I don't think this was a Port Elgin. Mm. Look at that shot. Yeah, that's nice. Up on the hill. I wonder where that is. Would that be like the Upper Peninsula, Bobby? Could be, yeah. I don't really recognize it, so I, that would check out. <laughs> like deep snow. It's not really mountains. It might be Laurentians, like Quebec, too. I was like, going to say it looked like maybe yeah. Quebec, right? Look at that little lookout house, the little almost like a lighthouse up there. <laughs> yeah, that could be Quebec. That's why it's important, guys. When you send in, uh, when you send in some picks, and if you want to be, uh, if you want picks to come in, um, send them to. Uh, Fan photo at mudbrats.com right there. See, I, I changed that. I lost everything this week. So I changed that and I, I got it so we don't block any faces. So send <laughs> it to fan photo at mudbrats.com. We'll get you up here. But give us a story too. It's important that we hear, like, look at that. Yeah, it's some, some boondock in there, right? Yeah. That's nice. I wonder where that is. I'd like to know. Yeah. That could be at Wawa it's, too, though. You know that? It could be because it's, look, it's looks not very similar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it could be the the what do they call it? The Badlands or whatever. Like the hills aren't very big, you know, that you see in the background. It's not very mountainous, so to speak. Yeah. And there's Roscoe. He was up there with them on the <laughs> 129. Yeah. With, look at the guys. So this guy's standing against the 2009. It's a summit, though. It's a 146 or. 145, whatever. The, he is he's shoulder depth in height in snow, and he's standing beside the sled, which is on his other shoulder. It's pretty wild. You know what? Um, that could be where furry rides all the time, which is um, it is in Quebec. It's I forget the the Micmacs, is it? Yep. Chick chucks. That's it. Chick chucks. You got it, Steve. There you go. That's why we have you on the show. <laughs> Yeah, they always usually get the snow first, and it stays longer too. Oh well, look at that! Oh, shot. for sure. That's Isn't nice. this great? This this is near Port Elgin, Ontario, on a sunny day in January 2020. He says it's a beautiful area, highly recommended. He's loving the show. He says thanks, guys. Yeah, isn't that awesome? That so, yeah, awesome. that is nice. Yeah. That is beautiful. Yeah. Oh no, sorry. This is wrong. This is Norm McDonald. Hold it. He sent me a couple. I'm sorry. I'm going to change that up here. You know, Norm MacDonald from, like, Saturday Night Live and all that fame. <laughs> he watches our show. I told you. No, he says, uh, he says, any thoughts on how this is the last day of trails being open in March as the Cat family headed back to, the, to Dorset from Timmins. Nice. And that, so that's got to be, like, top of the park or whatever, the A trail up there. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on how the OFSC will operate if COVID continues to have outbreaks? Love your YouTube videos. He says, we've been doing family videos since 2009, and some of our snowmobile adventures from when the kids were three and four years old, they're now 14 and 15. He says, keep up the great content and destination rides as they are excellent. He's from Flamborough, Ontario, Norm MacDonald is. Nice. So, anyway. That's I, a nice picture. I, it is, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. You, that's a that's a like having a bluebird day. You get a sunset ride like that. That's amazing. For sure. Yeah, that's nice. Beautiful. That's the best so part about the end of the season. You can ride so late and still have daylight. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's true. That would have been, he said that was the last trails being open in March. So that was like the first weekend in March, maybe the second mm -hmm. weekend. But I actually, um, I actually did some hunting for, uh, for Norm because that's something that's asked all the time is about, Hey, you know, are the trails going to stay open? Are they going to stay open? But, but, Trust me, like I'm a I'm an OFSC ambassador and and they the last thing they want to do is close down trails, you know. So like rest assured, they're they're gonna be monitoring the situation and trying to keep as many trails open as possible. And what they've done is they've done a couple of things. Is one they've they've introduced a, a color coding system. It used to be in stages. So if if a 
a health unit goes to a certain stage, you won't be able to ride in those trails that stage, but you can ride in the, in the other trails that aren't in the, in the stage colors and, and so forth. So it says the, um, they say right from their website, the impact of pandemic changes on OFSC trails with the recently tightened precautionary measures in four out of 34 Ontario public health units, that's Toronto, Ottawa, Peel and York. Some snowmobilers are wondering if the status change in their most populous regions will have any impact on overall trail availability this winter. The short answer is very little. So the fact is that the Ontario snow belt areas where most of the 30,000 kilometers of OFIC trails are located have reported few to zero virus cases to date. So he said uh, in the four named public health regions, modified stage two restrictions costing against non-essential travel into or out of each region. So if any OFSC trails are now available to ride with any of the four named regions, local residents would still be able to do so. The only impact of modified stage two on OFSC trails would be on inter-regional riding. So connecting trails located outside the name region for that lead into it or out of it would temporarily be unavailable for the 28 days that 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 remained in the modified stage two in effect. So meanwhile, trail riding within or between all unaffected neighboring regions would continue as usual. And then they also introduced this thing called flex trails. And it, uh, it, it gives you options within a certain health unit being available only for local residents on a temporary basement basis. So um, flex trails could enable regional or inter-regional riding to continue on certain designated top trails TOP, that's that acronym they use, through less populated areas while temporarily shutting down others. Alternatively, some snow belt communities might consider the flex trail option to reduce traffic locally in some locations while still enabling riders to enjoy other adjacent trails. So, you know, it's they're, they're working on tons of solutions is the point. So just um, hopefully they'll keep us going. I mean, it's all it's all what it is, right? So we'll uh, we'll see what happens from there. But yeah, thanks a lot. We'll always get to the bottom of things if uh, if we um, if we ever have any questions like that. So for you guys, you know that. So this is from Jacob Gardner. He says, I'm the second owner of this 92 Indy 650. has around 3,500 miles. He loves the show. Keep it up. And I think if I was going to own a Polaris, Rich, this would be it. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Those were bulletproof, man. Those were amazing. Mm -hmm. I think Jeremy had one of these. Yeah. Chime in, Jer Jeremy, if that's the case. I think he did. And my buddy Dino sent me in this. He uh, he said that he's never seen a groomer this big. Look at the size of this thing. Holy smokers. That's crazy. What do you even use that for? <laughs> this is uh, for grooming the trails in the, in the Upper Peninsula. Yeah. Wow. It is. See that's the see crazy. The, the Look at the drag on it. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Crazy! Ooh. It's got to be like forty feet long. Yeah. No. Where's the that? U U oh yeah, yeah. The U UP snop snop pilers. <laughs> snow pilers. <laughs> the U the Upper Peninsula snow flyers. I say. Isn't that wild? Did you see the size of the the rig though, Rich? Look at it. That thing would handle. Eh? That's crazy. Obviously I mean, good. You'd, you'd just <laughs> run over anybody that got in your way, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, that's about it. That is just nuts. He also said in that video, there's a, uh, he didn't send me a link to the video, but he said there's a, um, oh, what kind of brand of snowmobile was it? It wasn't a Sears. It was something else. He said it's pretty wild, some of the sleds in it. So. Oh, there's the new Riot. Yeah, this is a, this is Keith, Keith Sullivan. And uh, hold on, I just got to get my, my thing queued up. Thank you. Keith Sullivan says, <laughs> he says, this is a 2020 riot in there we go. Tug Hill <laughs> <laughs> with three thumbs up. There you go. Yeah. Nice. Isn't that nice? It's a beauty. That. See, that's a different color yeah. scheme too, you know? Yeah. I like that was that. the uh, other it's option. I mean, it's got the blue. Yeah, there was the orange it's, too, it's a right? Cool color yeah, it is yeah, nice. Yeah, yep. They're yeah. nice looking sleds. I like the cats. Those oh, are beautiful. That's a nice looking glad, sled. Gl glad cats back. It's nothing wrong with that. Nope. Yeah. Okay, so then this is Jeremy and Jesse. Just waiting patiently for the snow to arrive, Jeremy says. Thanks for the shirt and sticker. I took off the Killer Bee sticker. Jeremy, no. I told you not to take off the Killer Bee sticker, and you replaced it with the Mud Brat sticker. <laughs> so 
And it looks like I printed uh, Jeremy's shirt backwards. So I'm going to have to get you another shirt. It looks like yours. See, this is Jesse's got the right idea there. But uh, I told you that the, the, the killer bee that was on your windshield was the only thing holding that sled together. You had to leave it. Look, he's got his wife's hair dryer on the ground there. <laughs> Just before he turned it into a flamethrower. <laughs> Don't they look good? My two favorite guys there. My two bros. Bros before hoes right there. <laughs> this is from Justin Bold. He says, three out of my five family sleds. He's got uh, 2018 Yamaha Vipers. His fiance and my sled, my dad's sled is a 2020 Renegade X 900 Turbo. He recently added color match skis and a man of green ski plate. We're, uh, we're patiently waiting for winter to start in Wisconsin. As you can see from the pictures, I figured there was enough snow to take a quick rip around the yard. Hoping you all have a snow-filled winter full of memory memorable miles. Keep her sexy side up. The Wisco Sledheads on YouTube. Loving the podcast. Keep it up. And he sent me a bunch of photos here. Yeah. Isn't that a great set of sleds? Lucky. Yeah, that's nice. He'll be he'll be cleaning those gouges out in the spring from the pavement on the driveway. <laughs> Look at that. That's that's a beast. I like it. Oh yeah, there he's got the skid plate on the bottom there. Matches. And he sent me a picture of his trailer with some of the tracks in the yard. Oh yeah, there's lots of snow. <laughs> Plenty of snow. Uh, it, it's tough to carve in that though, you know. Don't you think? Well, you can see dirt. It's it's a little tough to, to right, yeah. carve. Plenty of like that first ride video. What's yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, if you got to get it done, I again, Corey Brock, he talked me into doing that ride. <laughs> I'm so glad I did because that's that there was when I look at that picture, man. I had I had like backcountry snow in my video yeah. for sure. <laughs> this is Maureen Maxween. She's got a 2017 Polaris 800. Assault 144. Uh, she says, Jeff Landry, Albert Bridge, Nova Scotia, east coast of Cape, Cape Breton. Looking forward to snowmobiling in Cape Breton Highlands. They've got some neat uh, neat terrain out there. I was in, um, I mean, it's nowhere near it, but I was in, uh, in uh, Labrador City, Newfoundland, and the mountains out there is incredible. I mean, they're not, it's not like, west coast mountains by any means but man i'd love to ride out there and cape breton and all that i mean they, newfoundland they've they've got some nice 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 riding opportunities that's for sure yeah so, it's nice out that way yeah and that's it for the fan photos so if you got any fan photos make sure you <clears> send them <throat> in to fan photo at mudbrats.com include a story too if you can and uh and we'll share them on screen just like we did here today so Oh, I got more. I've got all my fa my uh, my buddy Steve. He's on the Google Drive. That's where I put the people most important to me. <laughs> Very good. He's got some wicked photos. We'll let you. All right. Can you guys see that? Nope. Not yet. There, there we go. There you go. Perfect. There we go. Yeah. So this. You go ahead, Steve. You tell me what we're looking at. So can you blow it up a bit, Gary, or is that possible? Or yeah. No? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's an extreme uh, great thing. Yeah, great. Well, that's what the Tech Fest was designed to go through. Those are stud marks. That was Jamie Byers, Byers Equipment, Aurelia. Uh, oh, yeah. Was hot lapping. He was on um, stock sled, and they mixed mod sleds in the hot in the heat. Uh, practice laps so the mod uh, does the triple he can only do a, a double a single into the hollow comes up bang sled lands right on him wow it's oh amazing look at that look at that oh these are what we call tan lines customers send us in tan lines you can tell <laughs> what the where the vest was yeah for sure holy wow. yeah like that's crazy imagine if he didn't have that on Oh, he would have yeah. been, he probably would have lost his arm at least. I would have shoot it right off. Those are studs. Holy smokers. Yeah, there, we just <laughs> lost our monetization. Yeah, gone again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're not supposed to have 
male porn on this thing. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, isn't that cr- look at that thing. It's oh. chewed. It's like a tiger attack. Well, it you did its that, job, right? That's why we uh, use UHMW. Ultra high molecular weight is the critical component here. Nice. Wild. When did you, um, how did you come up with the idea, Steve? Uh, well, it started my last year at Bob RJ when I was the uh, cross country snowcross race manager for North America, 95. And uh, they wanted to move me to uh, Wausau, Wisconsin uh, for Minden, and the, that wasn't in the cards. So uh, at that point, I left uh, uh, Skidoo after 16 years. And that same year, of course, I was part of the snowcross program, Tony Hyken and Todd Wolf. And uh, there were a lot of accidents. So the ISR, our racing federation, um, basically banned motocross gear. And they wanted to have uh, protection that covered all four sides, all four dimensions. And I knew the rules were changing that year. And I was uh, there at the right time. We did a compressed R&D. In six months, we were on the track at uh, Duluth in Minnesota. That's wild. We started, we started out with race gear first, and then obviously the segue was to the trail. Nice. There's, uh, there's my 17 turbo. That's about this time back in 17. We had a nice wet dump and on the rail trail. I think I put a, maybe 125 miles on that day, just up and down the rail trail, but, hey, it's miles. Lots nice. of smiles. <laughs> Wow, that's awesome! Hey, hold on, I got I just seen something else pop in. Oh yeah, BKD six ninety four. He's a huge supporter of the show. For Five dollar sure. super chat. Thanks, buddy. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Look at the snow. Yeah, that's on a that. great. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. you can see where your feet were. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. We Look actually, at all were you actually doing like side like like carving on that thing that day? No, oh, that was just rail trail. So that that's that's uh, you know snow so dust it's blowing up, right? Fifty-five miles an hour, and it just swirls out back. And you'll notice on the new Yamahas, they have the plastic flares on the back that totally gets rid of that. Oh yeah, okay. Actually, I lent my uh, I lo- loaned my Tech Fest to a buddy of mine that was a photographer, and he he was doing the shoot at the uh, Chicopee Snowcross. Oh, yeah. you, you, you need a tech vest. It's the rule that the media needs it. So, Yeah, and that's yeah. when we, the first year we got our dye sublimation suite in-house, we started to make the, the custom graphics, and those were the media vests we built for the CSRA. Yeah, that's nice. Good color, too. That stands out for sure. It does. What model do you got, Gary? Uh, I'm Get not over. sure. It it might be the old version of the tra- uh, what do they call it the traveler or the uh... that's a vintage super sport from the early two thousands. You're missing your fleece collar. Oh, uh, right it's there. actually downstairs. It's yeah, unzipped. It? Yeah. Hey Steve, I've got one actually older than this. Believe it or not, <laughs> the very first one I bought. I was just telling Owen today. You won't believe what I paid for it. I was on a snowmobile group and a tech fest came up and it said two zero. So I thought the guy wanted 200 bucks for it. Cause I think they were around 300 at that time. And he was right in town here. So I went to his place in air and I said, so what was the price again? Thinking that he made a mistake and he goes 20. So I handed him a crisp $20 bill and walked away. And I was debating the whole time whether I should offer him 10, you know, <laughs> it was it was used wow. but isn't that crazy yeah i don't think you'd ever find one and it's in good shape it's got the fleece collar that zips off and yep. it's uh it's orange and i should go down and grab it it's orange and black yeah and it's got a little different front on it than this but i like this one better this is my son's actually yeah there's I, a puppet i see so is this you else. steve giving her or what yep. sorry is this you on screen here, just giving her? Yeah, no. When I was uh, I was the moto ski sales rep for Ontario uh, District Sales Manager 79, 80, 81, 82, and the province wanted to do a. I don't know if you go back that far. Some of your audience will remember the OTBA Ontario, Ontario Trail Builders Alliance and the OFSC, and the, you know they had a shotgun wedding with the government uh, holding the gun and said you guys amalgamate. 
And at that point, the province spent a lot of money on snowmobiles, uh, destination riding. So this was shot just outside of Minden. It was, That's uh, awesome. it was 20 takes to get that one done. That's an old Sonic LC, 1984 Sonic LC. Look at the year you're getting there. That's awesome. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Well, that's like that picture I shared a few, uh, one of the first shows of me on my Moto Ski Mirage 3 getting some air. Remember that? Yeah. I swear that if cool. that was yellow, you would, you look like Sled Ed on there, Steve. <laughs> oh, geez. I remember Sled Ed. <laughs> Steve wrote like the Steve. vintage, the vintage uh, you know, snowmobile suit. That's now awesome. we see where Larry and Ticer stole it from, eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, this is even better. You've got some yeah. golden ones here, bud. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's my very first brand new Skidoo. R no. RV, is it? RV 245, it says. 245 RV. TNT. <laughs> well, we talk about windshields missing on our new sleds. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> it's wide open, Steve. Huh? Well, That's that was awesome. an oval sled, so they, they, yeah. they built it purposely just for ovals. Yep. And then, of course, in yeah. 76, now came the windshield and raised the headlight. But that's a classic sled. I think they only built two, whatever the minimum might have been there, 250 of them. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Look how low down it is. To go from 73 mid-mount engines with bogeys in two years to go to forward mount with sliders, like huge, huge technical leap back then in two years. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And do, course, you, uh, do you remember the – do you remember when Holly Gully was in Exeter, Steve? And there's they used to have water. They had a pond, and they had water cross races. That was like before water cross was a sport, you know. And a guy had a TNT 340 like this with a uh, with on the front of that opening. He had a big like mailbox put out the front, like a huge extension. And this guy would clean up in the water, and he had. A sled like that and he'd go and he'd drive a circle everyone else would just go straight across the pond and he'd spend like 20 minutes out there doing circuits ovals and figure eights and it was pretty wild that's a wicked sled yeah oh well, if you can find an rv that's still running man it, it's scoop it up that's wild. So, oh here's a good looking guy here <clears throat> oh there we go Eldor Quebec. Spot the shot. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Look at that. Yeah, Veldor. Oh, dude. This is great. Nice MX. MX and X. Yeah, this was a one year race led at this is when I was working uh, on the R and D marketing side for Do and part of my uh, my my job was to get Skidoo off the ovals and onto terrain racing, and of course the I-500 was the big daddy then. So uh, I actually had the pleasure of doing some uh, actual racing as part of the job description. Getting All right on. There. So how did you um, how did you do in the race series? Were you were you pretty good, or you held your own, or what? Well, uh, the Polaris's were probably almost 20 miles an hour quicker. Seriously, we, we were like, uh, just get out of the way. So I was not laughed, but was uh, one of the few finishers. Oh, that's awesome. Look at that. Look at that. Can you guys hear that? No. Yeah, that's, that's my single vintage racer. Just getting it ready. Look at the carburetors. Yeah, it's in that wall. Here, I'll keep this going. Wow. Pretty sweet, eh? They didn't come with snow flops back then. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Look at that, eh? That's when you got off the sled and smelled like, like two-stroke gas and oil. <laughs> no mixture. That thing's in mint. That is wild. I gotta see if I can get the sound on that. Hold on, that's that's too good. To, you gotta hear that to see it. Oh wait a minute! Before we go to that, we have something yeah. else to announce here. That's wild. You need oh, the sound. You, on wait that. till you hear it. It's like crazy. Nice. 
We have a $20 super chat from Jeremy. Thanks, buddy. Here you go, boys. Have a couple on me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Here, I'm going to see Very if good. I can get some... Uh, I'm going to see if I can get some sound on that. Thought I heard it in the background there, but... Here we go. Um, no, it won't let me share sound on an application, only on uh, only if it was open to Google Chrome. That sucks. Oh, well. At least, you know, you got to hear him revving that sucker up. It's pretty crazy. Here, let me see what else he's got up his sleeve here. So, Rich, is that tech vest of yours? Is that like a custom print, or is that yeah? Just like so, a this is their style? part of their their dye sublimation that they can print. I got my name on the back too that you can. Well, I guess I can stand up here, but I don't know if you're able to see it or not. <laughs> yeah, and guys, I'll put it in the oh, chat nice. here. That's awesome. Yeah, man. so you, they, yeah, they offer. So this is the the trail mat. It's it's a nice vest. So it, it obviously zips up and up the middle, and then you've got uh, pockets. So you can put your like cell phone or batteries in either of them and then there's zip up pockets on the sides too as well Sweet. that you can on each but it's a great great vest and very 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 comfortable yeah. and warm i love it it's awesome it's, do it, you it, almost it's just, replace your liner with that or do you still wear like a liner in your jacket and that no even on cold 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 days bobby i have just this on it's it, it, yeah. it's actually a, like another insulator too so if if any of my coats which they both have liners in i take them out and just wear this and it's great awesome. uh, yeah. you can wear the liner like if you wanted to if you're a cold person yeah but these um these are are nice for insulating factors too as well so it's I nice definitely too. see comfort. that yeah. yeah, you feel naked without it. You really do, and it goes on like they fit underneath the jacket. It doesn't even feel like you're wearing anything. Yeah, really we good. mentioned that. I, it, it, it's like yeah. anything. It's like getting in your car without putting your seatbelt on. Now, I, like I can't ride without it. Like, and and again, I just got one last year, and and yeah, they're amazing. They really are. Yeah, but and here it is. It's an exclusive offer for for Reb Rider Five Fifty and Mud Brats ADV fans. So if you go to TechRider.ca/pages/inquiry/form, it's on the screen. You mentioned snowmobile sessions in the additional comments section of the form, and you'll get a hundred and forty-five dollar free customization with the purchase of your tech fest. Wow, so that's nice. You, that's an awesome deal. Thank you so much, Steve, and the, everyone yeah. at uh, Tech Rider for doing that. That's a generous uh, offer for all of our fans. So, yeah, yeah. Well, so if you're opportunity for us to connect, I'll also say that for everybody who fills that same inquiry form in between now and late wednesday night we're going to do, do a draw for a free tech vest of your choice on thursday noon wow wicked what? that's even yeah. better so that's don't awesome. forget to do that yeah. wow so everybody so sure get a fire reform in so yeah. somebody somebody's going to win and the rest of you can buy something <laughs> okay for <laughs> sure <laughs> that's awesome. well you could buy a tech vest and then your wife could win it win one and then away you go and the christmas shopping is done for the year right yeah that's yeah, pretty it makes cool a difference Guys, too, eh? so good so a guy in a, that rides with me gord a buddy a good buddy of mine steve and and uh rex um he hit an ice crack uh out on quagama three years ago now or was it two years two years ago and he wasn't going fast at all and he rolled off some he cracked his ribs and he was in hospital for a month uh saint mike's and everything and if he would have had one of these on he wouldn't have been anywhere near in rough shape so and he ended up buying one, and that's what kind of got us all in the the bandwagon of uh, you know getting protected. So, anyways, yeah. I can't speak high enough about him. So, yeah, no, that's cool. So again, I'll leave that up on screen. We're gonna cover up Steve and the boys down there. Here, I'll move myself down <laughs> to the bottom, and then that way, you move me there. there you go. That way, I'm I'm just covered up. <laughs> I'm not important. So, just get that. So, what are we looking at here, Steve? Is that a John Deere Spitfire? What is that? It is. It's a John Deere. It's very rare as well. It's called a liquidator. Oh, uh, liquid one, fire. One year, not liquid fire. That was the mm -hmm. consumer version. This was a purpose built race sled in 76. That is wow. wild. A limited build That's again, 220. And there you'll see a rev in the background. So this is uh, this is at the start line of the Winnipeg St. Paul in 77. Oh, nice waves, waves of 10 so you can see the wave behind me you can see one of the new rvs in the back there oh, yeah, yeah just yeah, no yeah. sticking out that's pretty wild that's wild and the flyers txl which was like the fastest thing out there at that time were they 340 the txl yeah we we're all we we're all restricted to 340. yeah nice 
they're all at the high end. Like this John Deere on radar in 1977, our pre-race preparation on Forest Lake, I clicked off 92 miles an hour. In Holy. 340 class sled. So these these were, all these sleds were built for high speed ditch running for, for Winnipeg St. Paul. Yeah. Now you had sent me a video link. I, I wanted to show part of it. Um, Oh, I think it was Owen sent it to me. That's awesome. Yeah. So you've got a lot of riding and uh, racing experience in history, Steve, in the industry. Yeah, it's like, uh, what, five decades now? So That's first, awesome. First all ride, 68. First sled I bought was 72. You get the sound there, so that's the one. Yeah, I I will. I'm gonna get the sound. I just got to uh, stop it and restart it. That's the exact one I'm wearing. Nice. Yeah, that, I know. And it, you know what you don't see is is the best part of this. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna pull it up. Now we'll have sound. Tell me if we got sound. Just give me a thumbs up, Rich. New trail master. So everybody rides with a cell phone, and. Biggest mistakes and common things that happens with cell phones is your battery life. And that happens because of cold, obviously. So in the cold, batteries die quicker. So what we've done is we've taken the vest and we've insulated our pocket system so that when you're running a cell phone, inside the insulated pocket system. Now inside the pocket system, there's also ventilation through the armor so that your body heat can escape into the pocket and heat the phone from the inside of the so one of the new and interesting features about our pocketing system it is the multi-stage pocketing system. If you have a super sport, you're probably familiar with the basics behind it. So you this have your cool. exterior pocket, reverse entry, so that you can access it from within your coat. Now, and behind that pocket system, you have the flap, and the insulation is between those two systems, okay? So your, your device, your media device, cell phone, whatever it might be, will go inside the pocket here. Within this pocket itself, it's divided, so there's a division down the middle. So that allows you to take like a hot pocket or, or whatever your little heater pack and you can stuff it in there. What it does, it heats the, the whole pocket will now be heated, but it won't be in contact with your phone. So it keeps that separation. You can also take it and you could put it in your front here and it'll still have a division of fabric between your phone and the heating source. That way you're not overheating your device. So another feature of the multi pocket stage system that you can take advantage of is with that division, you can take your portable battery that's you cool. Slot it into that outside slot there, and you can actually yeah. run your wire because the, the pocket doesn't go all the way down. You can actually run your wire within the pocket, plug it directly into your phone. It keeps everything nice and secure. If you needed to, you could also run it on the cross side, and there is a gap within the flap itself, so that you could run wires through that that gap there. That's what a good it also idea. Allows you to do is if you ride with music or headphones in, you can you can run out from the pocket right into your helmet. You don't have to reroute it around anything. And uh, that'll help keep that all kind of tucked in nice and neat. Another uh, thing that more and more people are starting to ride with and take advantage of are personal safety devices. So if you are running your phone, but then you run out of uh, cell coverage, run out of cell area. or, you're, or you're I'm just going to skip through. So uh, and the, uh, where, where does he show the back of it? It's pretty it's cool. Phone, right there. Look at that. Ways. So it'll keep it upright from the hot pocket getting onto your phone itself. So it keeps that division. What the division also does is it keeps your phone from falling sideways. So it'll keep it upright so that way anytime you need to access it it'll always be right there for you now with the other pocket system here is you have your zippered access so from that zippered point right there is that division there so you can keep so the, right here is where all the insulation and the uh the other fabric dividing layers are so within that you can also put your heater pack inside there and it'll still keep it separate from your phone or other media devices that are inside the pocket just so everybody's still aware, we are still manufactured here in Ontario, Canada, and we still deliberately source American and Canadian subcomponents for our vests. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you look forward to this new product as much as we do. And if you're interested and you want any more information, feel free to give us a call or shoot us an email, and you can find all of our info on our uh, on our website. Techvest.com. Very That's nice. Awesome. And Bobby's yeah. video is recommended right after. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that. That's awesome. Again. Oh, again. Yeah. yeah. So someone was asking in there the sizes, and I've 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 got the the label that came off mine, and I I think you'd, you'd see that was on mine. Those are the different sizes. It goes up to five times large. That's huge. 
That's some good sizing differences, Steve. You've got there, right? Well, we, you know, we've got to we got to fit all our customers. And, yep. Um, Five X takes us up into depending on your physique and height. That takes us like three fifty to sometimes four hundred pounder yeah. pound riders. I mean, they all need loving too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure, Head protecting. Yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah, That's cool. Well, I see you. So we have uh, um, Scott Hass and said he he feels naked if he doesn't have his tech vest on. He loves his tech vest. Um, the uh, Sean want to know what sizes to come in. We got that. Uh, Mike Eisenberg says, does TechFest make these for Skidoo and Climb, or is it not the same product? Yes, well, good point. Uh, so the Trailmaster that you're wearing there tonight, that's an exclusive that we've given to BRP dealers for one year at this point. And that digi gray color scheme that you see on the screen uh, is available through all Skidoo dealers in the U.S. and Canada. They're stocking extra small up to 3XL. If you want a 4 or 5XL or a youth, um, then just deal with us directly and, and we'll look after you. So yes, uh, it's on the uh, BRP uh, online uh, web store. There's a link on our website, so you can click in and pick it up at your Skidoo dealer. And we've been also uh, uh, building for climb for what, 15 years now. Uh, we also built for Polaris Articat Yamaha a few years back. So we uh, we do a, virtually all the OEMs. Nice work, nice. Uh, Noble Shot says I always thought the Tech Fest were primarily for snowcross racing, but now I'm thinking maybe not. Definitely not. Uh, trail riding all the way. You need one. Yeah, you well, definitely sure. need one. Trail riding is way more dangerous than a racetrack. On a racetrack, you've got you know, generally younger, fitter people all moving in the right same direction. Trail riding, man, we're still running in Halbert. We're still running trails that are 10 feet wide from 1970. But now we've got all these trail missiles, you know, pushing 200 horsepower, super wide, and we're sharing the same space. So trail riding is a lot more dangerous. Yeah, oh, sure. absolutely. Everybody knows what they're doing on a, on a racetrack. Not so well, much on a trail. That picture, I think it was about two or three episodes ago, Gary, you had that where that tree limb went through the front of the cow, up through the handlebars and came all the way through and would have impaled the guy. I yeah, I was telling Owen that. about that. I've got uh, it right here. It's yeah, I was, telling, I was telling Owen about that today because uh, it is totally insane, you know? Yeah, you're not wearing any protection. You're toast with that no well think about it you wouldn't you wouldn't play hockey or football or send your kids out to do that or ride a motocross or a dirt bike without full gear on so how, why do we get on these 200 or 150 horsepower trail missiles with nothing more than a helmet it just just doesn't make sense so it's but it's a slow education most most no girls would rather spend their five or six hundred bucks on go fast parts or bling no. until they get their wake up call once you get your wake up call then you know, what's yep. the cost of a day off work, a week or worse? And a lot a lot more money than a tech fest. You, you oh, also cover yeah. the other sports, too, recreation sports, too, as well, Steve, like for dirt bike riding, adventure bike riding, and that kind of thing, too, as well, right? Yeah, well, we're we're multilingual here. We're big ADV, big big enduro guys. I started enduro riding years ago. I was the Can-Am race manager when they had two wheels. So we're yeah. we're quite conversant with, with, with dirt, all the, the forms of enduro. XC and the ADV are right up to multiple cylinder ADV guys, the, the big beamers and the big triumphs. Uh, we cater to all, all those markets. Right on. Yeah. Now, Can you see that picture waiting. on there, Steve? Sorry, Gary, interrupt you. Yeah, there. go ahead. Yeah. Can you see that picture on there, Steve? It's, we're, we were talking about that. This is the one. Look, look at the size of that tree limb that came, came through. <laughs> That's <laughs> pretty rare. Isn't that crazy? Can you imagine? This is a. Uh, this is. This is one of our fans sent this in a few weeks ago. He said, this is why you wear a tech vest. Yeah. That's, that's, that's cause I've heard that. I've heard guys uh, getting speared with them and stuff. Hey, eh? like, Oh yeah. You don't, uh, uh, we have racks full of, uh, race, uh, race worn, uh, vests that we, we trade them back in after serious crashes. So we get to look at, uh, what happened and what we could do better the next time around. So we've got a rack full of, Damage tech best mainly from racing. Yeah. 
Corey says it should be good to sales this year with all the newbies on the trails. <laughs> yeah, newbies should definitely have one, but that's more reason for us experienced guys to have them too is because of the newbies that are on the trail, Yeah, right? For sure. Yeah. And yeah. Trailmaker74, if you're not ready to spend some coins sometimes on sledding, then you're in the wrong spot, and that's the truth, right? Yeah, yeah for sure. That's crazy, though. I remember that. Yeah. That's nuts. You sure so. that's not Photoshopped? <laughs> no, definitely not. There's two. There's another yeah, angle yeah. of that. He sent us another angle of that one, believe it or not, and it's uh, it's no prettier. That's, yeah, that's, that's an amazing shot. It's crazy. Isn't that crazy? I so can we, send it to you. He probably wouldn't mind you having it if you want it for your collection. Well, here's what we've done for a few customers: they've taken their accident shots like that one, and we screen it in on the inside lining. So oh, oh. you don't see it unless you want to open your vest and show it to somebody. We've done a, a number of them. We've sent their uh, x-rays. You can see all the stitches on the rib cage, and we screen them right inside the tech vest. It's, it's a memory because, so, you know, you pull into a bar, and somebody says, well, why are you wearing one of those things? So they take it off and say, look at this. Yeah. yeah. Nobody asked me why I ever wear one. They just asked me what it is. They never question why. They just go, what is that you got on there or whatever? But could I get – you remember the old uh, Farrah Fawcett? Poster we had when we were young, Steve. Can I get that in here? Anything you send us a, a workable file, and uh, we'll show you. Uh, oh, we'll show you when we do our walk around. We've got yeah. Oh, I got one here. Actually. Speaking of that, I don't know about you, Gary. I'm sweating in this thing. <laughs> oh, it's light, studio warm. lights on. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. And don't forget, guys, exclusive offer. If you if you go to the inquiry form on their website yeah, and mention Snowmobile so. Sessions, you get $145 off your, your customization. That's free customization. There you go. Look at that. Here, I'm going to put you big there, bud. Hold on. Yeah. Move him over there. There's a custom die sub design, but check out the lining. Oh, oh is that a reward? Wow. Yeah. So this is one well. of our original customers, Pierre Lacasse, down Windsor Way, 100,000 miles on his old original tech vest. He decided to treat himself to a new one. <laughs> so I said, just send us that picture, and we screened it in to his That's tech cool. Vest. Nice. That's that great. Awesome. And if you guys want a Mud Brats logo to put on your tech vest, <laughs> I'll send it to Steve. <laughs> so if you want to customize it and put a Snowmobile Sessions or a Mud Brats logo, or Rev Rider 550. Look at that cool new logo he's got. Barbridge <laughs> Outdoors. We could throw that on there. <laughs> sure. All three of us on there. Yeah. Share the we're, love. We're doing so many interesting original uh, stuff. We've got, uh, look at our custom designs. There's a little gallery on the website. And we've, we're doing more and more of these personalized things because people are understanding that they're going, hey, this tech vest, I'm going to have this for five to 10 or maybe 15 years. So let's have something distinct. Let's let's carry a memory of something inside. Do what you want on the outside. Uh, our, yeah. we, we do all this in house. Uh, we have our own dye sublimation. I don't have to outsource anything. So, customs where it's at, and uh, not a lot a lot of money to to go full custom in it. You can ride with your memories. Yeah. Awesome. How how do you know when it's time to to get a new one? Like do they <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, we cannot build any planned obsolescence. Uh, our, it's safety gear. It only has one chance to work, right? And I'm pretty picky on on quality. And, you know, uh, our customers have been very loyal. And as I said earlier in the, the program, uh, we've got customers who've had the same tech vest for 25 years, but they've been through dozens of sleds, bikes, helmets, jackets, pants, boots, and they still yeah. got the same tech vest. Yeah, yeah, it's good quality. I can attest to that. Well, you got yours on too, Gary. You can see that. Yeah, too I do. As well too. Oh, this is this is dynamite. Actually, yeah. a fellow here, Tony Cat Tech Writer, made me a personal military vest. That's cool. Oh, is that's that right? Wild. That's awesome. That's wild. Yeah. And two, Actually, I think I seen flames. that. On, I think I seen that. Is I think was that on your web? I it might be on your website. I think uh, Steve. I did see something like yeah. that where you you made one for a fellow for a vet. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot to bring mine in actually because I'm a vet and. Uh, Right. Um, basically, what I did was I took my last uniform, two, 2010 from Afghanistan, sewed it in the front, and then I took my first uniform from when I joined in 70 and sewed it on the back. Nice. Ne neither shirt would fit me anymore for some <laughs> reason, so we repurposed them. So now I get to ride with my memories. So we call that the Defender Program. 
if you've served in the nice. military or, or uh, ambulance EMS, even did one for a Boy Scout leader. Uh, nice. They sent us their uniforms, and we cut their uniforms up and pieced them into a, a tech vest. So, so it's one pretty of a pretty awesome. Product. Trailmaker 74 says the customization is a neat op option. We take our sleds and make them our own. So why not the same for our gear? I think it's cool. Yeah. And then Go Big Part, Go Big Parts, he's one of your distributors in, in the US. He says, How far behind are you on the supply side? <laughs> hey there, those guys have been with us for like 15 plus years. They're they're really they put up with our slow deliveries and uh, you know, we're just a small company ramping up. But yeah, you know, he's if he's dealing with Western Western Power Parts Unlimited. We just made uh, first shipments to Western and to, to Parts Unlimited, and we just uh, finished over three quarters of the climb shipments and three quarters of the shipments to BRP for the new Trailmaster. So yes, the stuff's out there actually earlier than in past years, and you know with with our pivot back in March from PPE snow and dirt, we went into PPE med. We went from a staff of about nine. Uh, to 26 on the ground now and so we're we have been building hospital isolation gowns those face masks we saw earlier yeah now, nice now we have more people who trained on the isolation gowns which is easy so stuff and they've worked we now work them into the tech vest line so our our tech vest output is is double what it was uh, last year at this point and the uh, the orders are uh, we're we're quite thankful for very large increase in orders and, and the awareness for TechFest this last couple of years has just really uh, kept us busy. Well, that's good. And it's a, I met your wife at, at actually the Sled Corps Militia Show and Shine a couple of years ago. I uh, It's on my actual YouTube as a video when I was there. And uh, I don't know whether you were there, Steve. I kind of recognize you, but then you look like the guy from Snow Tracks TV too. So I don't know if you're related to him or not. But, uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm that was Rita. That was my general manager, Rita. Lovely meeting. Oh, Rita. Oh, oh, that's not your wife? No, no, no. Somebody else okay. got it better than me. Yeah, there you go. No, yeah, like I uh, I, I met her at the, the show, and someone else was there with her, I think, and Melissa, she was sizing her, up. Yeah, Rita and Melissa helped me out. They're really awesome. Really good yeah, employees. Cool. All your employees are great, Steve. They're, they're really good, we're too. Small, so. Yeah. We're, small town, you know? we're, we're a little company with a big heart, and we enjoy the interaction we have with, with our, you know, super loyal uh, customers and, and all the new ones that we're getting is just amazing. That's well, when cool. I, I ordered mine last year, I was late to the party and um, uh, Melissa curred me one out to uh, to use and uh, to borrow. Uh, and it was a diva. It was a, it, I didn't care. It had the pink around it. And, and when I brought it back, the girls were in the back when I brought it back, they're like, hey, put it on. We got to take a picture of you. So it was on uh, nice on your Instagram page there or something like that. But yeah, no, awesome customer service. So when I was waiting, you knew I was going on a trip, a riding trip up from Quebec, and they they gave me a lender, which was awesome too. So that's yeah, cool. Great customer. Mike Milner there. says, uh, "Do you have a thinner vest? I'm usually pretty warm when I ride with my current gear, and don't want to add more insulation." Well, you, you know, you're going to have to want to wear protection, and if, if if you answer that question, and that's where you want to go, then you have to be prepared to to dress down. Generally, you get a tech vest is a is an insulator and a windstopper. Hopefully you'll never use the protective uh, characteristics, but you have to get rid of something, uh, a liner, jacket liner, or one or one sweater or a mid layer product of some sort. And you have to adjust your gear to, to uh, wear an attack vest, but it's a pretty easy thing to do. And uh, the armor, our armor is as thin as we can get it. To, and it's been the same for 25 years. We're not tinkering with the formula because we know it works when, when it needs to. I mean, nobody gets to uh, pick the time and place of their uh, crash. Yeah, yeah. So, so when uh, Steve Hassan was commenting, I guess on Rich's last comment about how great your employees are, and <laughs> Scott says Steve makes them do push-ups if they mess up. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your service in the military too, by the way, Steve. Yeah. That's I didn't didn't get a chance to interject. And everybody in the military, um, yeah. really appreciate your service on that. So yeah, for sure. Well, thanks for sending me. <laughs> no problem. Um, do you uh, do you want to do a tour of the shop, or what do you got? Yeah, in, what go. do you got in store for that? Yeah, we're just going to go a, a quick lap around the plant and just show you some stuff and lots of eye candy and. Nice. If there's questions come in, we'll we'll come back to our office here and 
and uh, be pleased to answer uh, any questions that you're uh, yeah here, so. absolutely well, well you know what they're all rude buggers so they'll be asking questions as we go so just be prepared to be interrupted as we go along here right guys no <laughs> yeah okay well uh, owen's doing our tech tech standby here and if this all connects we're gonna he's gonna be our pho photographer now oh i see he's come in he's there, there we, we go. go. Oh, now he's on. He didn't want to be on screen there. Hello, bro. <laughs> How are we doing? There you go. How's it going? Here, I'm going to get you big here. Turn your phone sideways if you can. There we go. Perfect. Oh, that's the license plate. See, there you go. They watch, they've been watching, haven't they? They've been watching. Oh, you oh. actually got that. Wow. There's only one of these. 1982. Yeah. I was the first one in the dog. That's awesome. That's crazy. And There's you're going to actually you sign it over to me? To, uh, see the face of the guy is going to be dealing with all those inquiry forms that we get. That's my job here. <laughs> Just exit there, Kevin. There we go. I took oh, the yeah. other one off screen because I was getting an echo on that. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Do these vests have flotation in them? I don't believe they do, but we'll ask them that when it comes up on screen. This Steve, can you hear us? Office. This is where Melissa sits here uh, <laughs> some days. Owen sits upstairs. We're kind of cramped in here. <laughs> I don't know if they can hear us, eh? No, I don't think so. Yeah, we can hear you guys. Okay, oh, Owen, you just when you, Owen, when you turn the camera, turn it a lot slower. Okay, so it gives you. it like, just pan really slow, make really slow movements. But uh, they wanted to know if you make any with flotation in them. Uh, no, we, we don't have anything that's Coast Guard approved, but the armor we use is a closed cell armor. So it does not absorb water and it does level, a, does yield a level of positive buoyancy that will actually float you to the surface and would make your exit and your survival a lot easier. But if you want a full floater suit, then you have to go elsewhere. We, we're too small to deal in that world of uh, Coast Guard approvals. Or such a the, regulate, the regulation. So it would be a good complement to a floater suit. Yes. As a, and there are some armor systems out there that use open cell foam. Open cell foam will absorb water and it will make you heavier. And the weight the difference that you you carry is, is when you try to get out on the ice. I've gone through a couple of times, and the hardest thing you can do is to, to, to get from water out on the slippery ice. Because when you're carrying 50 pounds of trapped water in your gear, you know you have to lift that weight out of the water and onto the ice. So uh, anything with open cell will absorb water and make you heavier. Very good, very good. See what kind of questions my my brab. Brap gang and brap pack ask. They're smart guys. They're smart cookies. We're all so, smart. yeah, that's great. So, is my tech fest sitting in that rack there with the with the Farrah Fawcett photo on it? <laughs> Farrah might be hiding in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's there. my there's there's my extra large one or my double extra large that they. That's funny. In. Hey, that's going to be worth something. They'll probably yeah. sell that to one of your fans. <laughs> hey? Yeah. Go to a live auction maybe with uh, one There you go. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Low, low miles. Yeah. Hey, can you actually great. can you actually print I love on the top of it and then that way we can auction it off tonight? Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. You can get anything printed on the back or whatever you want, right? So I just threw my name yeah. on it, but you know what? No, that way, if you're at a restaurant or whatever, you have it hanging up, no one's yeah. going to steal it. Right? Yeah. Well, you like to think not, but <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah. It's true. Here's the kind of dye sublimation work we do with uh, Scoot race, racers. racers. Oh, that's, that's cool. All, nice. That's all dye sub. That's not silk screen. That's not heat transfer. Yeah. What are you wearing on your body, Steve? Is it a sweatshirt that you're wearing? Uh, these are riding jerseys that we're going to bring to market again after 20 year absence basically this area here is all mesh yeah and then I insulated panels on the side insulated above the nipple line and the back of the shoulder 
so that where the tech vest is, you don't want to trap any heat. So this yeah. allows us to vent and keep the core temperature here, ideally the same temperature as your outer arms. A lot okay. of tech vest users will, will comment about sometimes having cold arms. By the time they get their core temperature comfortable, their arms can be on the chilly side. So we have a, a jersey, which is insulated sleeve, mesh, and it's just ideal with a tech vest. And uh, I have to talk to son Kevin, the engineer, when we're going to get around to it. But <laughs> we, all the all the R&D is done. We just haven't had time to fit it in production, but we will be. Okay. Oh, would you mind sending me an email when those come out? Because I definitely want to get one. And maybe I'll buy one for a, a, a Christmas prize for our fans here. Too. We can do a, let's talk about that because we can do a, a one of die sub just for your audience. Yeah, yeah, the, that's what we'll do. Yeah, we'll do that for sure. And if they like we did with sled, we did a lot of work with sled bar militia and we yeah. customized the uh, best for them. So, I did, I designed that logo for them. Nice. Yeah, nice. yeah, I did that logo. So I did 705 snowmobiles too as well. So yeah, the, you, the tech fest you did for sled core, they, they look really good. Yeah. Thank you. Well, look at behind you here. Here's a history wall here. Oh, wow. Nice. So, these are all our known competitors up here on the right. We look at them for inspiration every day. Jeez. Yeah. So, Steve, uh, Corey Brock wants to know what kind of warranty you, you have. 30 days or 30 feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. no real, like, when it comes to warranty, I don't want to speak for Steve, but, I mean, they're so well built. You're not going to have an issue with, like, do you know what I mean, Gary? Like, it's... Yeah, I don't know, and I guess if you're going to get in an accident, you know, it's like a helmet. Once you use them, they're done, right? So, yeah, for sure. If you do get in an accident, like contact us. We'll send some photos uh, because if there's any penetration, then there's a potentially an issue. But unlike a helmet, where you'll have a bad crash and cr crush the styrofoam, which should require you to update your helmet, our foam is very resilient, so there is no shelf life on on, on the foam and it takes a big impact unless the armor is physically penetrated by by a stick or, or studs or something then it'll live to, to, to fight another day as right far on. as warranty, if there's any issues uh you know we have to stand your one year manufacturer's warranty but you know we get people who break a buckle 20 years later they just contact us we just send them a buckle our, right our warranty rate is super super low we yeah. try to build it right the first time uh, so we don't have to contend with with uh, warranty issues. No. Yeah. Um, Steve, I think you owe me some royalties because uh, the supermodel line is going to take off. Uh, yeah, what he said said Farah. No, no, Samantha Fox. Oh, so, Fox. Yes, yes. Yeah. We're gonna get. We're <laughs> hey, Gary, can you bring up Steve's comment there? Steve Jones. He, he's got a good yep. look on it there. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, he says, uh, hi guys, good show. Just thought I'd mention, I just got to climb override alloy jack. It's the same principle to work with my tech vest. Should I say yeah. mid layer? He says, yeah, yeah. His mid layer works. So it's the same mid layer is like what you're wearing on your well, tech, body. The tech vest is a mid layer product. Yeah. You know, yeah. Some of the racers do wear it on the outside because it runs cooler on the outside. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Corey Brock was thinking more along manufacturers defects. Do you stand behind the product? How do you stand behind it? Well, absolutely. We're here. So if anybody has a problem, we deal with it. The warranty yeah. issue is actually an opportunity. They're so rare. It's an opportunity to talk to, to you know, customers and, and get their feedback. And, you know, we learn whatever lessons we need to. Yeah, nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay, keep going on your tour. Sorry to interrupt. There. <laughs> oh, there, there's my... Uh, nobody, nobody figured out what year this is yet. 72. No. Close. 71. Yes. Ah, the year I was born. Great year. <laughs> Sorry. Perfect. I dated myself there, right? Uh, is, that, is that your old race sled? <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, we still use that. Look at that. Wow. Nice. So is that one of the first ones? This is the vest that uh, Todd Wolf won the I-500 on in 77. Or sorry, ninety six. Mixing up okay. decades. Wow. Yeah. Uh, 
That's pretty cool. And you're getting to the yeah. There's the there's the press. Eh? I love that. Well, this is this is a cutting table. I'm going to let Kevin, son Kevin, the engineer, explain what this does. No, go ahead. Yeah, basically, it's a CNC controlled multiply cutting table. It just uses a reciprocating knife. So we just stack up our fabrics and then we put them through the computer system in our digital patterns, and it just cuts out whatever we put there. So it's it's super super handy when it comes to cutting. The cuts are are perfect. We used to cut everything by hand, which <laughs> Uh, the sword didn't like, but now it's all computer uh, automated, and it works great. Yeah. That's wild. That's cool. So, so Kevin, did you have to cut them all by hand when you're like six years old before you got the equipment in? <laughs> yeah, child. Labor. Were you were you like the child labor? <laughs> Bare feet in your diaper with a pair of scissors cutting fabric. Well, shorts. You always wear shorts all winter at the snowcraft. You always wear shorts. <laughs> Yeah, no. That's awesome. All right, moving so on. So, Kevin, down. do you race? Do you race uh, snowcross, Kevin? I raced snowcross for fifteen years. I raced and then uh, stopped when I went away to university and gone back for the odd race here and there. But I don't race full time anymore in snowcross. My right mind yeah. is the dirt world now. <laughs> nice. The only the only snowmobile racing I do now is on my my seventy one TNT. That's oh. the only the only racing I do. <laughs> Sweet. That's cool. So we're moving down here. Here's the brand new climb vest that's just being chipped. Oh, oh I love nice. that color too. That's oh, cool. That is nice. Yeah. Call it the race spec. So that's available at dealers in Canada and the US. That's so that looks like a little green. that looks like a little bit different fabric, or is it more open than what Rich has got on, or is it just my just because it's solid color that we're seeing that? Well, this is basically our entry level vest uh, called a freestyle. But for climb, we've given them vent ventilation holes in their armor. I don't know if that comes comes through. We oh, vent yeah. the armor. So this is the lightest and coolest tech vest that we make, and it's uh, exclusive to uh, climb. There you go. That's the one that that guy needs. Then has been for fourteen years. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Eisenberg says that's sick looking. And mm -hmm. new refund says, looking mint. <laughs> Here's the top I... of the called the Trail Sport. Sure. Yeah. So is that what I'm wearing right now is a Trail Sport? No, sorry. This is a Trail Pro. And this is uh, from our race chassis. There's no zipper here, so it's over the head donning. Okay, so it's like putting on. It gives you more frontal protection because the zipper is there for convenience. It does create a gap between the front panels. That's what my other one is. It's an over the top. It doesn't have a zipper up the front. There's that fleece collar you're missing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, I've that's got it. Yeah, yeah it I've off. got it. It zips off. That's why you're able to do that. Yeah. No, they're great. I got them for both uh, vests. It's a good deal. And there's another one that we, uh, we've been looking a lot at tonight. That's the new... Uh, Trailmaster. Yep. Nice. Uh, is that size like is that a size large so Rich can get that one next year when he loses another hundred pounds? <laughs> this is large, yes, we'll, we'll upgrade you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I make my tech vest, I've worn a size large for twenty five years, so I'm exile now. So the girls sew a large label in just for vanity on my <laughs> that make you feel better, right? Customers. <laughs> That's Steve, awesome. what is it? Is there any tips for sizing? Like, if someone's going to order one of these online, how do you size it? Well, by the weight, the weight's very accurate. So I, I can wear a medium, let all the way out, and I suck it in, and I could I could ride home, you know, if I had to. I I could wear a large, with about half of the adjustment, or I go XL, and then I have more side overlap. So I can actually. A lot of people can actually. Where fit into three of our sizes because we build in a lot of overlap. It's all about oh, okay. This is the most important. The the hits that'll turn your lights out come from lower left, lower right as you go in. Hit angle comes up into lower rib cage into the engine compartment. Cracks off ribs and then internal bleeding. Shock. People can die in less than an hour on the trip. Okay, that's good to know. So it's all about weight. So when you're in the shopping cart. After you put in the snowmobile sessions in the comment form and you get your free uh, you get your free customization, 
And then what you uh, what you do is just put your weight in and you pay and you you got a tech vest on the way. Yep. Yeah, we'll cross we'll cross check it because a lot of folks uh, like to deliberately oversize things. And let's face it, a, an extra large uh, T-shirt from Vietnam is different than one from China. You, you know what? You got to try it on and not look at, get hung up by the label. But our stuff is is very generous and very accurate. And when you fill the inquiry form, you'll have to give us your height and weight, and then we'll fine tune your choice. Yeah, so that's where I come in, eh? Uh, Owen here behind the camera. So th those inquiry forms that are coming in. Uh, I'm going to be dealing with each and every one of those customers and, and I'll make sure we check every, every one of those that it's going to fit your. Yeah. And what was the deal again that you had, if you're going to take every inquiry form you get and on by Wednesday, end of day. We'll open up uh, when uh, Thursday morning, when we come in, Owen and Melissa will download, uh, we'll check all the inquiry forms and just you have to mention your podcast. You'll, we'll go into an electronic drum roll, and we'll, we will pick a winner live at around noon Eastern uh, here in, in the plant. And oh, that's awesome. awesome. Uh, you know what? Let, let's call in, and I'll do it from my – let's call in at noon. I'll call you at noon on Thursday. We'll do it live on here, okay? Yeah, that's, no, that's great. That'd be and good. Then, and then for anybody else that wants to order any one of the four, because we have four uh, models for, for the trail. We have a freestyle, super sport. Trailmaster and the Trail Pro. So we can talk you through those four choices. And if you want them customized, like we, we've shown you here tonight, that's a standard 140 upcharge, that, that's included. So you just pay this normal retail plus HSP shipping, and then we'll put yeah. on the, the custom graphics the module. And how about shipping to the US? Is that a problem? 95% of our customers are in the US. We sell more Texas and Scandinavia than we do in Canada. Perfect. There you go. So for any Rev Riders uh, um, fans, not an issue at all. No. So, you know, we'll get a Mud Brats and Rev Rider logo on the back of them and you'd be rocking. Heck yeah. yeah. Plus your dollar goes a lot further up here, guys, for the, our American uh, viewers. Right. Yeah. Or if you if our fans don't like either one of us, Bobby, we can put a Pasty Boy logo on it for them. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A real celebrity on here. That's right. So. He probably let us put a logo on there too. So we'll do a paste boy logo, <laughs> rich outdoors, rev rider and mud brats. <laughs> It'll be odd. There'll be so many logos. There won't be room for a fair faucet photo. Right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Here's a, here's our Bushmaster. This is a son, Kevin, the engineer. This is his pride and joy. This is his project. He's been working on for three years. This is for off road. Oh, that's there's cool. Else. Three different types of backpacks that are can be quick attach hydration systems. Oh no way! We go big time with the arm arm guards because there's a lot of contact with trees and stuff. Nice. Full pockets in the front for tools. Gary, we'll have to look at that for adventure bike riding, bud. Yeah, no kidding, <laughs> right? Yeah, that looks good. It's called the Bushmaster. There's a there's a video on our website of that. Right on. That's cool. Do you guys still do the snowmobile covers, those quick covers you had? Uh, oh, look at the nursing outfit. Uh, okay, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, we're, we need to bring that one back. In fact, I've got a really cool little, just a cockpit cover that covers the handlebar for trail touring. You know, you come out of your motel. Yes. Back, freezing rain, you want to protect the instrument area. And uh, we've done full covers from uh, front to back. Uh, but it was a really specialized racing product with a lot of money for too many a lot of folks so we've got out of that but it's one of my on my to-do list to get yeah back I, to be I, doing see, them. I seen that on snow tracks tv and i thought what a cool I mean, idea because they're just like yeah. a little bimini top that you yeah. clip on the handlebars and over the seat and it you know you come out and it's got the if it's a big snowfall it just keeps it especially with exactly. the new dashes on the sleds eh yeah you know you don't have to worry about snow plugging up your 7s or your 7.8 in, inch panoramic you yeah. know, it might be a hot item, and plus yeah. you could put uh, you could put a Polaris logo on your skidoo and be anti theft as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, there's well, some gallons. Yeah. yeah. So, Steve, is it time for your proctologist appointment? <laughs> we got nurse. <laughs> we got nurse Kevin here. Well, this is just our pivot back in March when we were able to 
everybody in Ontario, the businesses were closed, of course. We had to send everybody home for two weeks, and we used that two-week period to uh, pivot, retool the plant, and move from PPE, snow PPE tech that we've been, uh, dirt that we've been doing for 24 years into making isolation gowns. So we had a huge increase in, in uh, volume, obviously, through, uh, throughout the pandemic. So we're making these uh, level two isolation gowns and shipping them to doctors and dentists in both countries. And uh, we're making the face masks that we wore earlier on, which are now three ply because the uh, you know, Canadian uh, health uh, uh, has yep. recommended we have three ply masks now. So we're we're building those here in in, uh, in the. That's great. So you, you ended That's up awesome. getting the, the the medical supplier obviously uh, license you were mentioning, Steve, too, which is awesome, right? Yeah, we were fortunate in about two and a half months we got our MDAL, which is our manufacturer's distribution equipment license from Health Canada to, to build these gowns. And that's a process that um, we're told can take years to get in normal times, but we're in wartime, pandemic time. So the, the government to their credit actually fast tracked folks like us to get up to speed so that we can contribute to the supply chain. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, thanks for doing that. That's a yeah, good that's way amazing. to keep things going when you're slow and, and help help out the frontline workers for sure. Yeah. Well, we're able so, to you know, offer full-time jobs uh, for a lot of folks around here because Halbert County, you know, it's tourism based and, you know, it's, it's tough. There's a lot of businesses that are probably not going to be here a year from now. And we've been fortunate yeah, unfortunately. to be able to hire a lot of really great talent here. Yeah, that's, well, that's great. And back on to the snowmobile covers. Uh, Snowstorm <laughs> says a packable cover would be great for touring. And the, you wouldn't believe how packable these covers were. He had. I bet you could fit it in your pocket. It was that. It was sublimated stretch fabric, and I bet you it would fit in your pocket. Yeah, yeah. I, I would get one of those for sure, man. For touring, like you they said, were cool. you come out. You know, that would be awesome. Yeah, for sure. I think Steve's going to make us a couple, and then we can promote them on the show. <laughs> right. Yeah. We, With we need to diversify our line and, and create stuff like that. I mean, this has all been developed. It's all been R and D. It's just. We didn't have enough. Our tech best orders were so big, we had to concentrate on their primary product. But makes sense. The, the riding jerseys and the the, uh, the touring uh, uh, cockpit covers are just uh, uh, a logical next step for us. For sure. Yeah, do what you're good at doing and and stick with yep. it, right? Yep. But there are some good things though, like you said. Like I bet you'd sell a bunch of those, man. Just get some Rev Rider 550 ones, you know, some mud <laughs> <Yeah>. brat ones. <laughs> Fair of fair of faucet. Yeah. Yeah. I like the Sam Fox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that. Here's here's a pro light. This is a snow cross order that's going out. Oh, cool! Oh, right on. Yeah. Do they have to be high vis orange, or is that just uh, uh, yeah, like is it a standard color? Have to have 144 square inches of high vis orange visible from the front end from the rear as well as the helmet nice yeah that is yeah, that, awesome that looks good and you got a roll of toilet paper there just in case nature calls <laughs> <laughs> there's our armor that's how thin it is oh sweet yes they don't add a lot of heat they're, they're wind protection and warmth in that sense but i don't ever find mine like oh it's even on the warmest days that I'm too hot because I think they breathe so well. Well, they still trap heat because you can't get airflow through a, a closed cell product like this. So yeah, we, we've created all kinds of seams and we flow a lot more air than, than a lot of other protective stuff out there because of our design. And we have so many, we have very many uh, pieces, uh, patterns that between here, that's a gap. Air can come in through here, air can come yeah. out on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, like right in there between the two pieces. Yeah. He is, he is the enemy. I thought an oncoming sled or a big tree branch sticking out is an enemy. <laughs> <laughs> or is that the guy's name? Is his name Jim Heat and he's flying down the trail in your lane? <laughs> Jim Heat. He, he is the enemy. <laughs> oh, man. We'll, we'll take you back out in the sublimation room. Oh, yeah, cool. This is what I like. This is all, the back, yeah. this is all armor that's hand die cut. 
ready for insertion in the tech map. Okay. Sweet. They're all cut, ready to be built. No, oh, we're losing internet connection. I think, eh? yeah. As they're going to the it's back a, of the it's plant, it's a secret. It's a lead, the lead room. He doesn't let anyone see in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mark Bo <laughs> says he's, he uses he's, he's been Cooper using his Cooper all, all since the '80s, like and they work fine. Yeah, I don't think we're that we're going to get to see the dye sub room. No, I think we're getting. Oh, wait, hang on. There we go. <laughs> well, now we're on the sewing line. Corey Brock, why are you watching? Why are you watching on Rev Riders channel? Right. What the hell? It's all right, we're here. Yeah, so since we couldn't make it back to the dye sub uh, room, there basically what dye sublimation is is it's directly injecting the ink system into the fabrics themselves. It's not a print on the surface. Well, it's similar to silk screen or vinyl transfers, and that dye sub actually imprints the fabric itself. So because of that, it won't crack, it won't fade. It'll always be in there for the life of the material. So as soon as the material fails, obviously your graphics gonna fail, but until then it's gonna stay in permanently. So a dye sub is a vastly superior printing process and it lasts as long as the fabrics do. So it's uh, it's the top of the line stuff when, when it comes to printing. Yep, yeah, that is great. Yeah, and nice. the quality is good too, right? So, yeah. But, Here's our, yeah, coming into cool. our sewing line now. Oh, this is where they sew them all together. So is this where Kevin sits all day? <laughs> <laughs> Only when I have to. Yeah, he's, been, he's uh, actually turning quite handy tuning up the sewing machine. <laughs> is he good? It's, uh, it's all that racing background. He's got he's got the world's first 167 horsepower snow, uh, sew machine. It, look at the industrial. Did you see the sewer there, how industrial that thing was? Wow. There's a... There's this is an order. This is BRP's order here. Okay, so similar to the, the color I'm wearing, I guess. Is it? Here's yep. The fine shell without the armor. Oh, that's cool, hey. How they put them together? Do we still have a line running isolation gowns. Oh, cool. Well, well, if any of your your viewers are connected with uh, doctors um, small clinics uh, and they're having a tough time getting PPE they can just contact us built right here a minute we're supplying well, that's our great. smaller practices here who are kind of missed by the big supply chain oh that's awesome nice how many square feet did you did you already tell us what your building is we're we're crammed into about uh, just under 8,000 square feet Oh, oh nice. bigger than that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So you don't you don't hold much. You, you make them and ship them. They're gone. There's not much warehousing or anything there. Unfortunately, up, up until this year, it's it's been built to order. But because of our the PPE pivot medical, we were able to increase our sewers, tripled the number of sewers. Uh, therefore, now we're feeding them into the TechVest project so that we can actually have inventory in boxes and ship the same day which has never been the case. I mean, our customers are so loyal. Often like six, eight weeks, we still haven't shipped and they're, they're polite enough to not cancel their order and you know, say, hey, what's going on? When can I get my vest? So <laughs> we're able to fulfill larger numbers more quickly now um, as a result of a big increase in staff due to PPE medical. Nice, nice. And again, guys, don't forget to go to techvest.com and, uh, and, Follow that, uh, follow that instruction on screen here and fill out that uh, inquiry form, Snowmobile Sessions. You not only get $145 value in the free customization, but you also are entered to win a free tech vest just by filling the form out. So do that before Wednesday, and we're going to do a draw here live on Thursday at noon. That's awesome. Okay. Some lucky we'll guy, man. That's going to be amazing. For we'll sure. talk about getting Rich Outdoors logo for the back there, <laughs> or Slut Addicts. I, I seen they wa he wanted his logo on the back there, so <laughs> he'll he'll be filling it out for sure. Jesse will be Jesse and Mike. So Gary, you were mentioning earlier that you uh, you didn't want to have any uh, you know male porn on on your on your 
on your show, but this is where the ladies work. So. That's funny. Look nice. at the ladies, eh? That's yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah. It's just a different world back here, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. It's equal opportunity. June's been with us for a number of years, and she just loves her uh, her uh, motivation. Motivation. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. Here's her, uh, her completely unique uh, sewing machine here. Thanks to Dwayne oh. Johnson. That's cool. She that's probably calls awesome. it the rock. She does. It's got the yeah. rock written on it. That's awesome. She's, she's building here our smallest vest. We built right down to Pee Wee. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Do you make them for animals too? I, I bet you people would buy them for their dogs. <laughs> funny you should mention that. So, yeah, there is, there, there is some inquiries about the, the dogs. That's Just awesome. before you go on with that, we have a super chat. Nice. From Corey. Corey Brock. He said, Corey Brock says, by far the best session yet. He's loving the info. Great job on this one, Gary. It's not just me. It's Bobby and Rich and Steve and Kevin and Owen. We're all in this together, man. Thank you, Corey. That's awesome. He's gone right up to Boondocker this week. Nice. In one week. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So, sorry, Steve, continue. See, they told you they're rude little buggers, eh? You let these guys out of the house. <laughs> Throwing money at you. <laughs> yeah, they throw money at us, and then they, they just interrupt us when we're on to something. I'm going to show you something I, that you can't tell anybody about. All right. Ooh. Where are we going? Don't freeze on there us There we lose the feet again. Right. <laughs> lose it again. No! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's, oh, there's the cover. There's the cover. Yeah. One of them. That's one of them. There's a bigger one, though. This is the full sled cover. This is just for showrooms, for trailers. This is not uh, for outdoor use. But you can see the die sub here. That's a picture of Kevin. He's our uh, vintage racer every every spring when we go to... <laughs> that's to, awesome. Uh, Carney. <laughs> that's awesome man those things would sell well i know they would oh no the, rich the other one is way cool man it's the little yeah, weed, uh, I do. ones oh yep. dude if you look on the snow tracks like youtube channel and go back well, i've seen them i, I remember why well, yeah. I, I, I remember seeing on steve on the youtube channel that they may had them when they were yeah. showing them when they were going to introduce them oh wow look at that one snow lover says anybody that Snow Lover says anyone that rolls her sled once and breaks her collarbone once will then wear a chest protector and never look back from not wearing one. True yeah. that. Yeah. We get our customers for life. Yep. Yeah. This is our very first tech vest, 1996. Oh, sweet. No way. It yeah. matches the old Skidoo formula. 24 years ago, eh? Yeah, That's the wild. Formula 3. That's awesome. Yep. That's when our company, we, we, we came out, we called it Techware. Okay. Without, without doing any, you know, this kind of internet was only 94, so this is 96, and then we found out somebody's already registered that. <laughs> so a suggestion came in from Motorhead, Mark Lester, actually. Well, why don't you call yourself Tech Rider? And here we are. Yep. Yeah, Perfect. the Tech Rider is way cooler. He did yep. good on that. That is good, yep. And, and Tech Wear, you know, you could have house parties and you know, get all your friends over and yeah. <laughs> would you like to come over for a tech aware Ooh. party there? Oh, wow. Yeah, cool. Tucker Hibbert action. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That is cool. No, noble shit says that vest does look primitive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you the, use the same armor, the same armor we used then we use today. We only, Upgrade we made over the years was go from HPPE plastic to UHMW. Nice. Yeah. Eight, UH has eight times more cut resistance and works better in colder weather. Okay. Yeah. Richard Carter said he never used a tech vest, but he might have to invest in one. But Richard, just go on to the fill out that form, and then and you get to win one. You you could win one on wet on wet Thursday at noon. So just go on there. I put it back up on screen there for you. You know. So get on there. If you're thinking about it, see if you win one. And if you don't, buy one. They're cheap. Cheap insurance. Yeah. Richard Carter said he just did. He filled out a form. He might be the first form winner. You know? Yep. Hey, whoever fills out the first form, I'm going to throw some stickers at him. 
So you let me know who that is. Yeah. And then we'll we'll announce it, and then I'll uh, I'll send him a sticker pack uh, next week. There I got a picture of my this afternoon already that it sent one through when oh, before really? we were even live. That, that's the pow. Wow, that's the power of snowmobile sessions, buddy. <laughs> power of snowmobile <laughs> sessions. Corey Brock said it would be great to have an exchange program for kids as they grow out of them so quick. Is that a possible? Is that yeah, a possibility? We do it all the time. We do it all the yeah. time. Corey's got a little youngster that's into, he's got a little kitty cat. It'd be awesome to see him in the gear. Yeah, I got to get a picture of my son, Zach. He's 24 now. When he when we bought him the Mini Z, I got him a tech vest. Like he he whipped around on a tech vest and I had his number on it and everything. <laughs> so he still has it. I, I got to awesome. get a picture of it. Yeah. Uh, Maritime Snow Rider says he purchased a, deck, a vest from 509. I'm wondering if you make them. Do you do 509 or is it just for about eight years and this year they decided to do their own. Okay. Okay. Yes, That's their did, loss. The really. It was their very first dice up point nine years ago. Wow. Well, they, they, they're, they do their own thing and we were slow on delivery. We understand, but, uh, you know, yeah, oh, that's rush, fine. Uh, yeah. Can't rush our work. No, nope. you know that's right. You can't rush perfection, right? <clears throat> that's what I always tell my wife when I'm late for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Is that a, one of the original 509s? That's cool. That's a mountain pack, or shovel pack for the back of a tech bus. All right on. Hey, here's a good question for you. Uh, Tony Cat says, is the front zip version just as protective as a traditional over-the-head style vest, or, or is there an overlap? I would think so. Uh, so the, the armor is the same between zippered and non-zippered product, but if you want more protection, no zipper in the front, which is what the racers need because they're always jamming into their handlebars and brake levers and that sort of thing. And the zipper is, can, is a weak link and it's a gap between the armor. So if you want the ultimate in front of protection, run with a, a Trail Pro, which that's what I've been using for years. I can actually get it, once my helmet's off, I can get it on and off and buckled up quicker than fumbling around with a zipper. Hmm. Yeah. Corey wants to know if there's a patent on it. No patents. Or if he uh, could start first. making them and sell them no, <laughs> yeah. in his own basement. We, we could use a little competition. We like competition. <laughs> yeah. No, is there a patent on it? Sorry, I interrupted. Armor has been around for centuries, so you can't pattern armor per se. You can look for a process or a subcomponent of that. Okay. Um, and my patent lawyer said, look, it, don't. Spend your money on trademarks, which is what we did with Tech Vest, Tech Right. Uh, okay. Tech yeah. Oh, I got you. Your name. Yeah. Your name's worth more than. Yeah. 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 No, There's a good. common question. Go big parts. I have a 2003 Trail Pro I still wear. There you go. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I got a. upgrade. <laughs> yeah. It's time to upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. I might buy your old one from you and upgrade mine. <laughs> <laughs> the frugal door. Yeah. The frugal dude looking for another twenty dollar tech fest. I gotta, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it up next week for the show. Oh, you gotta. Maybe I'll wear it on Thursday. Wait. What do we got there? It looks like one of Mark Bow's coats. <laughs> Sorry. <Jesus. laughs> Is that one of the? That's one of the Bimimi tops right there. I had to mute my mic. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, Mark, I love you, buddy. <laughs> this is the touring. Uh, this is the full uh, back of the seat for the handlebars windshield. Okay. All right and on. This will clip down into the sideboard so we can make some tension. So when you come out in the morning, you know, your seats are clean and, and the whole cockpit's clean. That is cool. Yeah, that's, so that's, one of, that's, this is one of the first protos I worked on. Okay. I think right that was for 2016 XRS, if I remember correctly. Yeah. That, well, if you guys get into making a little tiny one, man, I'd be all over that. Yeah. yeah, it's something we need to do. The problem we get into is people can customize their sleds, so you know, you can a windshield height will throw this thing off. We're trying. Yeah, to for sure. That. So yep. yes, maybe we need the XRS version with low, medium, tall. You know, it's it's. It's there. The, the R&D is done. We just haven't had time to execute. And 
get it. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, yeah. like you said, you're going to pay attention, Steve, to your your bread and butter, right? And and you obviously have large orders you got to get out to your customers, and that totally makes sense, right? And that'll take priority down the road, maybe. You know, sometimes. So. Well, this is for everybody who's got a tech vest. The last twenty five years, at least they can uh, do business with us with the riding jersey and, and a tech vest. Absolutely, absolutely, True. for sure. And that's that's what Gary was saying. So when you get your your uh, your clothing back up and, and running, you will let us know, and we'll. Well, that brings up our, our clothing line power touring gear, our jacket and pant line that we brought out in the early early 2000s it was you know, very technical and people are still able to wear it. And there's only just starting to wear out here like 15 years later. So we're working on bringing our, our jacket and our pant uh, and our riding jersey combos back to market and hoping to have a surprise next year for our 25th anniversary. Oh, oh very cool. nice. Very nice. Uh, Scott Scott Hassan says, "Did you use a frag vest as an early model prototype?" A frag, a frag vest. Yeah. No, we uh, back, we started with um, what's called a safe jack. They were out of uh, Wisconsin. They made um, for oval racing. We started with that, but it was all square cut, good, which th doesn't fit around a around the body. So we started to curve things up and make sure that all the cut lines. Were, were good enough for a rider in action because a, a snowmobiler moves around on a sled more than a dirt bike rider does. So when you think you're on the handlebars and you're, you're leaning forward, you're going hard uh, left, and then you come up on the seat to make a corner, you go down right, and you're back and forward. A, a, a snowmobiler goes through a wider range of motion than most dirt bike riders. Right. Really? I didn't know that. That makes sense. Wow. Yeah, so that's yeah. why we cut three things. You can yeah, and your arm movement is awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. That's pretty cool. Yeah, there's the original safe jack up there. Oh, sweet. Oh yeah, right on. That was Ken that's Tom, a neat little shop you got. Uh, it's a bit of a, a collection. Yeah. So, what do you? You're a snowmobiler as well. What do you? What do you ride today, Steve? Um, I'm a, I'm a trail guy, so I've, uh, I've, uh, SRX 2020, been on Yamaha's for 25 years. Nice. Love the four stroke, uh, no oil and regular fuel, big speed. Of you course. gotta, you should have sort of sent me pictures of Yamaha, we don't have any Yamaha fan photos, you notice that? Every week. So you yeah, gotta send gotta... me in some, yeah, you gotta send me in some fan photos in your Yamaha, like every time you got it out. Yeah, for sure. We gotta get our Yamaha quotient up. Yeah. Uh, Noble Noble shit says he agrees in terms of snowmobiler needs to transfer. It's way more than a motocross rider. Yeah. And and D Dustin Ingram has a good question. He said, "Should you wear a different vest for snowmobiler and four wheeler ride?" No, you can wear the same. You wear the same vest? That's good to know. Really into extreme dirt. You want a lot more, you'll want a lot more ventilation and you want to be able to carry more tools if you're an enduro two-wheel rider. And that's where the Bushmaster yeah. comes in. But if you use our basic entry-level freestyle, you can use it year-round. We have uh, people who use that's... them on horseback riding. We have a hockey. We have a goalie who wears one in uh, pickup leagues. Um, nice. That's kind of cool. That, that would give you a little sense. bit more freedom, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I oh, never thought of that. Right yeah, on. I might just go out and become a goalie next week. <laughs> Ball hockey, right? Get back in. <laughs> yeah. oh, <fuck. laughs> here's uh, here's our power touring gear jacket and pant combo. Some of our oh, that's nice looking. Yeah. This is 2003, 2005. Nobody flows as much air as, as we do. In the oh, end, wow. Oh, wow. End, Very much like road. a climb, isn't it? Well, uh, climb's a good customer, but we uh, have triple the ventilation that they do. That's wow. and you don't make that anymore. No, it. Uh, you know, back in two thousand five, it was a thousand dollars for a suit, and snowmobilers back then were would spend that kind of money on bling and go fast, but not on clothing. But uh, snowmobiles yeah. in the last ten years, snowmobilers are coming <laughs> way further ahead in technical outerwear knowing about layering good stuff so we're ready to bring this back that's right cool 
Well, I think that with American customers, with the Canadian dollar the way it is too, like they're going to be, if it's a thousand bucks, it's only 700. You know what I mean? Yeah. 700 US. So you could probably sell a pile of those. Yeah. Corey Brock says there's a brand new one with tags on Kijiji right now for 200 bucks. All right. Which model? <laughs> there you go. Don't know. Yeah, it's like the climb stuff too, right? As, as you get in, like as the clothing changes and gets more competitive, right? The 509, the like all that clothing is pretty, it's it's, yeah. it's pretty intense and, and people will spend the money on it, right? Yeah, they will sure. now. Especially for, for good sure. quality stuff, right? Yeah. Well, we're all about durability. I, I As I said earlier in the program, uh, I don't know of any manufacturer that went overseas to improve product quality. Yeah. We've stuck to domestic sourcing. These fabrics uh, 15 years ago were milled in Canada. All that milling uh, uh, is gone now, of course, but there are still uh, uh, milling companies in the U.S. who we'll, we're looking at right now. I would oh, prefer yeah. to buy it's domestically sourced because there's higher quality control. There's more input cost, but you know, my, my own uh, pants have about 30,000 miles on them over 15 years, and the zipper finally blew out. Wow. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And people won't, you know, they won't mind, you won't mind to pay good money for, for quality stuff, right? You know, especially yeah. stuff that lasts. We're not going to be the biggest in the biz. We're just going to be the best at what we do and, and cater to a niche of informed riders and uh, both um, dirt and snow who will appreciate quality and are prepared to pay something for it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like that's the thing. Uh, uh, Maritime Snow Rider says it's thirteen hundred bucks for a climb suit. Hey, Derek Moffat's in the house. Welcome aboard, buddy. He said, uh, hey, Derek. "Derek, yeah, that's like core militia right there." Uh, Derek wore his freestyle on some moto a bit. He saved him, saved his ass a few times. Uh -huh. uh, so Corey wa wanted to know if there's a, <clears throat> if if guys use these for motocross racing as a change from the chest protector. Yeah, we have um, a, a solid market with the vet motocrossers. Uh, the young guys uh, will still wear a Liat brace and no nothing else, and you know because they want to be cool. But the, the vet motocrossers who uh, have to be somewhere on Monday morning and have had some injuries in the past are wearing them for uh, for motocross. Here, Kevin's bringing one out here. This one's cut specifically for yeah. This, motocross this is my old moto vest. It's got some use on it. Oh, oh wow! Sweet. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, Slow B, this is what Rich is saying. Go to techrider.ca and fill out that uh, inquiry form. Mention snowmobile sessions in additional comments. And uh, you not only, if you buy a tech vest, you get $145 free customization value. But uh, if you don't buy a tech vest, you're entered to win a draw. On Thursday at noon, we're going to do a draw live to win a, a tech vest right here. So get on there, Slow B, and, and good luck. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look at one for uh, for my bike in the spring. That was kind of neat. That one with all the pockets on it. Yeah, that yeah, was really that cool. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, Kevin awesome. must be sweating, sweating his <laughs> yeah. nerds off. Huh? <laughs> That's awesome. Three M Tinsula still keeps on ticking. High quality. Product. Oh. Yeah, that's good. There's only a few suppliers can use 3M's Thinsulet, right? Yeah, it, it's tricky. It's, it's not as tricky as it used to be, like with Gore-Tex where everything is highly regulated. The, most of these things are open source now, and there's there's no issues. Okay. Uh, there'll be, for us to, to apply the uh, three insulate uh, tags, um, you know, I'm not, I haven't dealt with them in a couple of years, but then there had to be a, an agreement that... The garment had to use 100% thinsulate and couldn't just have a little patch on it just enough to put the their their identification on. So, uh, this is all stuff we're working on now. That's awesome. Well, thanks for the tour. That's great, man. That was yeah, that's, awesome. That's man. really cool. Thank, and not only the tour, the offer. That's yeah, uh, no, for sure, absolutely. What what you're doing for our our uh, fans is incredible. Like the. When, when you said about the, the $145 customization, I thought that was dynamite, but now you're doing a draw for them. Uh, that's, that's even better, man. I, 
I can't thank you enough. Yeah. And, and there's even a lot of people in here that's that's interested in, in your product too. So yeah, that'll be good. So get it, get it, get going on it and uh, don't don't miss out for sure. So um uh, Derek Moffat wants to know if the buyer's vest made an appearance yet. It'll show you why you need one. Yeah, it did, Derek. We we showed the we call it uh male pornography is what <laughs> what we are calling that. Yeah, that's a pretty incredible uh save it did, you know. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So no, that's great. Perfect. Is, yeah, it, is there so anything else, guys, that you wanted to add in uh, before? No, you, you, already, uh, you stirred up the pot with our tech dusters. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> uh, I have to refer this to my son, the engineer, because uh, we have, we have a, <laughs> several projects. Uh, we're not even taking it into the R&D wing. So. <laughs> We've got all yeah. kinds no, of I... there. We've all fully developed. We just had to put them in the back shelf because we're not big enough to pull the trigger on them. A, a range of products like that at this time but we are certainly working towards that end yeah well if you if again this is a great like we we've said it since day one it's it's a great venue to reach out and hit the community of snowmobilers and i think the people mm -hmm. watching this this podcast and listening to the podcast and watching it live are are the diehards and i mean if if you guys think there's a you're interested in something like the tech duster leave it in the comments below say yeah i'd be i'd be interested in a in a cover for my sled like that and and we'll know whether it's a good good way to go a good direction to go or not you know and i, I think that's uh that's the uh, a good good gauge for you to use you know yeah for sure so but again thank you for your time guys i mean if you've got anything else to add by all means do it and uh Again, I'll uh, I'll hit the social feeds up again after this, and I'll put it in the comments uh, uh, below as, as well about the offer. And then uh, we'll see you guys on Thursday at noon. Perfect. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Keep the rubber side Thank down. you. <laughs> yeah, yep. for sure. Thanks, Steve. Really <laughs> Thanks, appreciate Steve. that. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate yeah. it, guys. Yeah, for sure. No, they were they were wonderful, right? Yeah. No, that was great, man. That was good. Listen, that was I, that's why I said to you, Gary, we, we had to have them on because, the, like, I, I've been to their their facility three times. Like I said, when I bought my original one, and because of their their turnaround time, like you can't just go order one and go pick it up, like hockey equipment or whatever, right? They're custom fit, they're custom made, and and whatnot. And and like I said, they were nice enough that they they cured me out a, a loaner to wear until mine was ready, and yeah, uh, that was awesome. And then it ended up being too big. Uh, that was my fault though not not theirs and then uh yeah like i said and then i lost more weight so then they were nice enough to exchange it and do it and you've seen my old one in there i can't i did yeah, that was cool that was, that was, awesome. was huge man so but anyway until, no. until like, today i had no idea how custom built they were i thought it was just kind of like anything and they had like a couple sizes and you ordered one i didn't know it was so bespoke yeah. yeah yeah no yeah. and uh, that's the thing i seen them in action at the sled core militia and if you go on uh, facebook and just check out uh, sled core militia it's a great group they've got got probably near twenty thousand uh members or or uh people in that group or more it's probably more now but they were at the show and shine they used to do up north and i'm telling you man like the care they put into the customers as they're fitting them and it was like you think it's just a vest you just throw it on and go they it's their baby man they really love it so yeah yeah, yeah. and derek says the custom forever. options are amazing like they they did a custom one for sled core militia and it's dynamite it looks so cool you know so mm -hmm. yeah and they'll print anything you want if you give them a graphic yeah like, for like, sure i didn't i just threw my name on the back right my last name but yeah. like that's you can put whatever you want in it man and it's like i said they're you know, until you actually have one and you put one on, like Gary and yours, same thing. They're so well built, man, and they use quality product. Like the, the yeah. components in them are not yeah. half fast and garbage. So, yeah, yeah. But, but again, you know, they're... like, go ahead, Gary. Go ahead. No, I was just anytime they're mentioned cool. around here, it's always tech vest. You know what I mean? Like by the brand, everybody knows about it. So they're definitely doing a good job with marketing. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's the Kleenex of the of the industry for sure. And that's the thing, 509 going on their own is going to have a tough shoe to fill because people are still going to call it tech vest, even yeah. though it's their own, right? Yeah. But the, uh, yeah, make sure, guys, like that that deal is good. Like fill out that form and you'll get in the draw for the for the tech vest on Thursday at noon. So 
I mean, get it in before the end of day on Wednesday, though. That's the that's the key. Get it in and, end of day because it'll be Thursday morning when they open the office doors. That yeah. is when that when they're going to just not take any more. Yeah. You know, and just, so then just remember, guys, these aren't cheap, man. So like, that's an awesome thing for them to offer. Like you know, like, yeah, like I, the discount on the custom printing is amazing. Like that's awesome in itself. If you order something, you get it for free. You don't have to pay extra for that. And but the giveaway, like I mean. Someone here tonight's going to win an awesome, awesome, I know, by far, I man, know. the best, yeah. best quality of anyway yeah. we've we've given so For far. Sure. So that's awesome. Yeah, man. Derek with Slagcore Militia, he's he said they've done two or three runs now. Like he does bulk orders of them, and he said they're amazing to deal with. True that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no, good. They are amazing, man. They're a good company. Der so. Derek, I miss the Sled Co. Show and, show and shine this year due to COVID. Hopefully, you can get that going again next year. That was a riot. And the burnout show at the end is something to be part of. <laughs> yeah, Rita. Yeah, she, she, she's amazing too. She was. She helped uh, Melissa and Rita were the ones that helped me for. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out. See, there you go for Corey fitting her. He fit his three year old son with the spot on vest. Been wearing one, wouldn't ride without it. Now he's on the snow cross track. Yeah. So there you go. Oh, we got something else. Another one. Up here. Dotson, buddy, man. <laughs> he's just hey, he's doing he's this awesome, every, every week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, making it rain. Thanks, buddy. making That's it rain. Awesome. Thanks, Dustin. He's awesome. Can't tell you how much I appreciate that man coming up to Christmas and everything too. That's amazing. Yeah. He says he loves the about. podcast. I'm learning so much each week. I watch. I keep it up. Here's some skidoo fun. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll we see, try to get them go. like, 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 and we should remind people like it's we, all three of us work hard to get guests on, man. And you know, because yeah. we know where everyone will like it, and it's it's awesome, and it's good for. I mean, we're all enthusiasts, right? And it's awesome yeah. to have have amazing uh, yeah. suppliers and people that are involved in the industry on. So it's awesome, man. And that that was a, yeah. another another great week. <laughs> Corey Brock's in for the show and shine next year for sure. I think Bite Harder's coming on next week, and they got everything from sharpening tools to LED lights for your helmets to everything. So um, nice. they're uh, they're they're scheduled for Monday. So that'll yeah. be a really good show as well. So every year we are gonna get every week we're gonna get better and better. You know, so you know we should mention too, Gary, if you don't mind me mentioning, we have a female guest gonna be coming on in a couple of weeks. Uh, for sure you know, people for sure recognize her on instagram and that so yeah, it's, it's not nice. it's not fair faucet <laughs> <laughs> yeah. as much yeah. as we've reached out to her it's not her but no <laughs> it's good uh, yeah we got it's and that's saying we got a lot of female viewers or quite a few female v viewers too so again yep. one won the contest last week so i did see a comment a little while ago um about the handlebar and uh you're supposed to contact uh straight line performance i'll send the email contact out again and let them know what handlebar you want and there's also a question about a riser you had too so um yeah it's, jason was asking me about that today so we'll uh we'll make sure that we get there so awesome yeah um maritime snow rider says he doesn't think gary will be able to handle all the polaris in the show and shine <laughs> how do you know i won't have i might yeah. have my polaris in the show and shine you yeah. don't know yeah right yeah. <laughs> what about what about <laughs> Mrs. Porter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't you can't get her photo on your tech fest there, Jesse. <laughs> I won't let you put her photo on there. Because if I'm riding and, and it shows up in front of me, I might run right through the back of you. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. And there's different <laughs> ones. Like I, I don't know if you saw through like his all the different models, vests too, eh? That are thinner, like you know, like the snow cross ones, they're the the hard core plastic on the, the on the thing like the shell and they're they're not as thick but th this is breathable like i said right like it's got it's got uh everything inside that breathes and stuff i like this one the best too and when it's cold it's awesome like literally i wear a thin uh breathable uh like under armor uh shirt underneath it yeah. and it's awesome like i don't wear anything yeah. heavy because i sweat i sweat i, I yeah. mean I, I sweat sitting down when, I, when i'm snowmobiling so but yeah, that's yeah. awesome, man. That's awesome. Like they're giving away a yeah, vest. That's, that's cool. Some lucky well, viewer yeah, listeners going to get a vest. Again, I can't say it enough. You got to go on. I'll just post that again in the chat again. Yeah. Go yeah. on there and fill out that inquiry form and do it by the end of day Wednesday this week because the draw will be made Thursday morning. So yeah. we will uh, we will make sure that uh, that someone's happy with that. I think it's cool. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so that'll be good. Can't wait. Do a live, so. You can do a live stream. 
Yeah, we'll do a live stream. We'll link up. Awesome. So, Bobby can come on for that too. That'd be awesome. That'd be, we'll hop on. We'll hop on. Why not get the whole gang together and yeah, and get sure. there? So, yeah. And then we got some Christmas yeah. stuff coming up right down the road, right? So, yeah, yeah, for sure. December tomorrow. That's crazy, man. Yeah, we are. Well, yeah, our trails so. open uh, next Monday. Right on, Bobby. You gonna be riding? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if there's snow, but it's not looking great yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah I, I, I don't get that. I don't know how they can say trails open December eighth, like. Yeah, you gotta have snow. Yeah, well, yeah. Old Forge will let you ride dirt as long as you're up there spending money. <laughs> True. <laughs> well, apparently it's snowing up in Sudbury tonight, so it's coming down. And I looked at the forecast, and and the model was. I think Steve was mentioning me too. You know those forecast model guys that that are already yeah. they're saying by mid December the temperatures are going to drop drastically. So, yeah. Anyways. Yeah, that's what they always say. So anyway, well, if you I guys know. just stick around for the next 30 seconds where there's, uh, I'm just going to run the outro, but there's two more videos that we think you're going to like to watch. So just click on those uh, those links when you see them come up and give this video a like and share on your favorite social groups like Slugcore Militia or 705 Snowmobiles. And we'll get, uh, we'll get this thing rocking every week. Anyway, guys. Thanks again, Bobby. Thanks again, Rich. Yeah. And uh, thanks again for all the super fans, like the ones you see on the screen here and the new ones that came in this week. And uh, we'll get to you guys next week. journey